Thanks to Hover for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. I talk a lot about productivity apps in this channel, but for the most part, the apps that I cover tend to be the more well-known ones, Notion, Todoist. So today I wanna to flip the script a little bit. Today I'm gonna to be joined by my friend Ali Abdal, who is a doctor, a YouTuber, and a productivity expert in his own right, to talk about some of the lesser known productivity apps that both of us use on a daily basis to improve our respective workflows. Here are six productivity apps that you probably haven't heard of before. What's up, Ali? Hey, man. <laughs> I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? Good. Doing well as well. So what I wanted to do today is give people a glimpse into some of the more maybe obscure productivity apps that we use, maybe like little utilities, things that just help us get things done a little bit better, go that extra 10%. So I brought three and you brought three as well, right? Absolutely. The first one I want to mention isn't really an app. It's something that's built into every uh, Apple device. So iOS, iPadOS, macOS. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's something that a lot of people don't know about. And that is keyboard replacement. So if you go on your system preferences on your Mac and you hit keyboard, mm -hmm. uh, then under this text thing, what you can actually do is create these like little keyboard replacement -y thingies for whatever you want. So often I'll, I'll get a, a question from people being like, hey, how do you study for exams? And if I type in exclamation mark AR across any of my devices, so iPhone, iPad, Mac, it will replace it with how to study for exams, evidence-based revision tips, and a link to my YouTube video. If I type in exclam exclamation desk setup across any device, it will say my productivity desk setup 2019 or 2020 or, and, and a link to the video. Basically any important thing that I find myself typing out more than once, mm -hmm. I will turn into one of these keyboard replacement thingies and it will just be synced across all my devices. And I think that's completely magical and I think more people should do this. In fact, if I show you my iPhone screen, so on my, on my iPhone, I'm going to go into settings uh, and it's got text replacement and you'll see it's got all of the same ones and it's synced across my Mac and across my iPhone, so. Okay, so the first app that I'm gonna share is not actually a, a Windows specific app, it's a Chrome extension. Uh, so I don't know about you, but I am absolutely terrible with tabs. I'll just have like a million tabs open. Mm -hmm. And then I go like to shut my computer down at the end of the night, but I want a lot of these tabs. Like I want to know what they were at least. So there's a little extension called Tab Copy and you can just click this little button here and copy the URLs to all of your open tabs. And you can choose to have like expanded where it'll have the, the title and the meta description. Compact is just the title or just the link. So I'll copy all the tabs and then I can just open up Notion and I can go to my little dashboard or my note taking system. I'm just gonna put it in my little daily tasks scratch pad here, but just boom every URL that I had open is now here. Wow. So I can finally close down my browser at the end of the night, but not lose anything because I know it's it's been tracked here in Notion. Have you ever needed to use this <laughs> to resurface old tabs? Absolutely. Or is it more like a security blanket? Uh, absolutely. I use it all the time. Actually, I'll show you for the, the course that I'm building. These are all of the links that I have saved from my browser just for wow. like plugins for shopping carts or cloudflare optimizations or all kinds Damn. of stuff like this is a project that's ongoing so i'll work on it a little bit every day but i don't want to lose this stuff before mm. i'm done using it as long as i have the urls i'm good to go all right next we have an amazing mac app and this is one of the most powerful things about a mac which is unfortunately not quite built into the operating system and this is an app called mm. alfred uh and the cool thing you think about alfred is you press command and space and then it brings up this box that essentially lets you type anything. The Windows equivalent it is it's sort of like hitting the Windows logo key. And on Mac, it's sort of like using Spotlight Search, but Alfred is just a lot a lot more powerful than the default built-in options. So there's, there's lots of things you can do with Alfred, but uh, the simple ones is you can use it to open any kind of app. So let's say I want to open Chrome. I would hit Command Space Bar, and I would just type in Chrome, and I'd hit Enter, and Chrome will open. My whole philosophy around this, and I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way, is that when it comes to productivity, like it's, you know, on, on a macro level, it's important to do the right things and then do those things right. But then on a very micro level, if you can just shave off milliseconds off any interaction that you have with a computer, that is really going to add up over the long term. And so mm -hmm. normally, if I want to open Chrome, it would take me at least two seconds to go all the way across my ultra wide monitor and click on it. Yep. Whereas with Alfred, it's sort of done in less than half a second. And so there's, there's like a lot more you can do with Alfred, right? Like it's not just launching apps. You could like actually do a Google search or open a website pretty instantly. Yeah. Right? 
And that's what, I li that's what I like about it compared to just usual Mac Spotlight. Mac Spotlight lets you open apps, it's reasonable. But let's say I want to search something on Google. Mm -hmm. I can just type in whatever I want and hit enter and it will just automatically realize that I'm trying to search Google. If I want to search Amazon, I type in AMA tab and then mm -hmm. I can search Amazon for whatever. So it's kind of like my home base for anything I want to do in the computer. If I want to open a file, I press spacebar and then I can open any kind of file. So if I know what like a, a title for a video is called, I can just type it in and then it'll, I can open it in downloads or I can open the file directly or whatever. The other, the, the other really cool thing is that it's got these custom workflows that you can put into Alfred. Ooh, uh, so the one that any? I use, yeah. So the one I use is an integration with Fantastical. Okay. So Fantastical is my calendar app and you can just type in Cal. So meeting tomorrow at 2 PM in Oxford. <laughs> Uh, and it will natural language processing that and automatically say, see, it's it's added the location, it's added meeting, it's added the time. That's uh, awesome. And so this makes it super easy to input calendar events uh, as soon as like, you know, I find out about them. The other really cool thing about Alfred is the, the clipboard saving. I don't know if you use yes, this. Yes, I use the crap out of the clipboard saver. Yeah, it's so helpful because like how many times have you sort of copied something and then overwritten it by copying something else, but this mm -hmm. gives you unlimited basically keyboard history. Yeah. Um, it's quite handy. So the app that I want to talk about is actually one that is not exclusive to Windows. It is on both Mac OS and Windows. So anybody using it or anybody on any OS can use it. Uh, it's called Loom. So I take a lot of screenshots and a lot of screencasts to essentially document what I'm doing. But Loom lets you quickly record your screen and then instantly gives you a link you can copy and paste to share with somebody. Um, so I use the crap out of this because it has a Notion integration. So we have a knowledge base in our Notion workspace. And anytime I want to document a process really quickly for somebody on my team, I can create a page for it. And then I will just do whatever I need to do uh, in a Loom recording. And once I'm done, it immediately copies the URL to my clipboard and I can paste it right here into a Notion page. Damn, that's really helpful. I should do this a lot more for team documentation because I, do, I don't document anything right now and I know it's really bad. And every time I do something, I think, oh, I wish I'd recorded a loom right now. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah. helpful. All right. So the final app I want to talk about is a podcast app, which is unfortunately available for iOS only. Uh, sorry, Android heathens out there. Uh, and that is called Air, uh, A-I-R-R. -R. Now, Air is amazing because Air is a podcast app that lets you save the best moments from podcasts. And they call them air quotes. So the idea is that let's say you're listening to an episode of The Knowledge Project where Derek Sivers uh, is being interviewed. So obviously I'm listening to this at 2x speed. And anytime I come across something where I think, oh, this is a really interesting uh, sort of insight or an interesting viewpoint, I can hit the air quote button and it will save the last 30 seconds of what I just heard. And for most of these kind of big podcasts, they've got transcripts available for them. So it will automatically transcribe and, and figure out what Derek was saying. And therefore I've got a written record of the bits from the podcast that I want to save. And so right now I can title it. So Derek uh, thoughts on happiness or whatever it was that he's talking about, I hit done. And now whenever I want, I can look at my air quotes and I can see this library of quotes that I've saved from various different podcasts. So you can see I'm a big fan of the Tim Ferriss show and I've got tons and tons of quotes saved from Naval Ravikant, another one <laughs> from Esther Perel, loads from Seth Godin loads from Derek Sivers. The other really cool thing about this is that this actually integrates with another app called Readwise, um, which is what I use to help resurface my highlights from Kindle and from Instapaper and from Twitter. But the really cool thing is that Readwise has an integration with Notion where anytime I make any Kindle highlights, so I've got 116 of those, it will automatically import into this really nice libraries thing in Notion where I can see all my books. So all anytime of your highlights, they, they go into the correct book row? Absolutely. So let's see, let's perennial set up a Ryan holiday. And here are highlights that I made like a few days ago while that I was is cool. reading the book. It's really awesome. And more relevant to us, it also works for podcasts. So here is this episode of the Tim Ferriss show with Seth Godin. And these are all of the times where I pressed the air quote button while listening to this episode. And now if I want to revisit this stuff, whether I'm making a video or an email newsletter, or even just to revisit stuff that I found meaningful in the past, mm -hmm. I can read the transcript and it will give me a timestamp, which will take me to the air quote where I can listen. Okay, so for my last one, we're gonna go a little bit back to a concept you had talked about at the beginning of this video, which was the whole text snippet replacement. On Windows, there are many apps that can do this, but the one that I use is called Auto Hotkey. And essentially you can write out scripts that 
will let you define keyboard shortcuts to do almost anything. And I honestly have only just barely scratched the surface. So I've got a demo script here and all of these are little scripts that will do specific things. So these are some of my keyboard snippets here. I've uh, anonymized some of the addresses, but if I'm filling out a form or if I'm maybe talking to somebody in Slack, I can just put like H-A-R-D-R, -R, hit space, and it will automatically expand to have that address in there. Or if I'm going through and like one of these is affiliate commissions, um, I have to type this a million times every time I'm doing my bookkeeping in zero. So I can just put AC1 space affiliate commissions. And uh, that is probably the simplest thing you can do. Uh, this one's fun. So these are, these are some clipboard replacement scripts. So like I said earlier with Notion, if I want to share a link to a Notion page, if I click this and I copy the link and I want to share it in Slack, by default, it's going to be this HTTPS version. If I click that, it opens in my browser where I don't want it. I could edit this to have the Notion slash slash thing, but it's on my clipboard. So if I just hit Control Alt V, which is the keyboard shortcut I have defined here with uh, these symbols. So this means Control, this means Alt and then V, then it's automatically that Notion version link and it will open up in my desktop app. And then the last thing that I've done here is I want a way to very quickly open folders that I use all the time. So this is like my uh, main YouTube folder. This is the Google Drive folder with all of the thumbnails so I can access it if I'm traveling. And these are just opening instantly when I'm hitting a hotkey. So what I've done is defined a series of keyboard shortcuts. So this is Control Alt Shift 4 that opens a specific file path but I don't wanna hit Control Alt Shift 4 because it's a really weird, awkward hand position. So I've got a Corsair K95 keyboard and that comes with this Corsair software. And I have multiple profiles on here. So this one is called Everyday and I've got actions defined. So these are just macros of me hitting this short code or this key, so Control Shift Alt seven, for example, uh, is recorded here. And then it's just bound to one of these G keys on the side. Well, thanks for joining me, Ali. Uh, if people want to find you, where should they go? Thank you very much for having me. Um, my YouTube channel will be linked in the video description, I'm sure. Uh, and yeah, you can check out my stuff there. Thanks for having me. It's a, it's a real honor. Absolutely. Now, before we wrap this video up, I want to clue you in on a couple more resources that you might not know about if you tend to watch Ali and myself here on YouTube exclusively, which are our respective websites. Both Ali and I have personal websites where we create content and also let the world know about ourselves. And I don't know about Ali, but personally, I view my personal website as my online home base. My biggest audience exists here on YouTube, yes, but at any time, YouTube could go away or it could change in a way that I don't like or that's disadvantageous to me. And with my personal website, that's not really a threat because it's a platform that I control 100%. I can do whatever I want with it and I can make it the sort of home base for all of my online operations. And for that reason, and for other reasons as well, I think it's a great idea to start thinking about building a personal website for yourself if you haven't done so already. And of course, the first step to getting started along this path is to get yourself a domain name, such as mine, which is thomasjfrank.com. I was born a little bit too late to snag thomasfrank.com, but I was at least able to get the one with my middle initial. But that's the thing about domain names. Once somebody grabs it, if they don't let it expire, that's kind of taken and you can't get it, which is why you wanna get your domain name as quickly as possible. Even if you're not ready to start building that website, get that domain name locked down and go over to Hover to do it. Hover is the best place on the internet to get your hands on a domain name, not least of which because they have an extremely streamlined and hassle-free checkout process where you can actually buy a domain in less than 30 seconds. I have timed myself on this before when I bought thomas.lol and I've also bought thomas.blog and all sorts of other interesting ones. And that's because Hover also has over 400 domain extensions. You've got your classic .com, .me, which are great for a personal website, but you've also got .lol, .limo, .blog. There's tons to choose from. And of course, once you have your domain on Hover, you've got a ton of different options for how to use it. You can build a professional email address like thomas at collegeinfogeek.com or use their connect feature to hook it up to website builders or even online
find store builders. So to lock down that domain name that you want so no one else can take it and to save 10% off your first purchase, go over to hover.com slash Thomas Frank and sign up. Big thanks as always to Hover for sponsoring this video and thank you as well for watching it. Hopefully you found something in this video that can be a useful resource for you in the future. And if you did enjoy it, hit that like button to show the YouTube algorithm what's up and get subscribed if you haven't done so already. Beyond that, my new channel, Thomas Frank Explains, has plenty of Notion tutorials going live all the time on there. So check that out if you're interested in learning how to use Notion more effectively. Otherwise, I'll have a couple of other videos here on the screen right here and right here that you can click on or smash your face into your phone screen for extra style points to watch. Beyond that, maybe consider following me on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Frankly, or don't, because as always, I'm not your dad.